A return to full house for Boston theaters will have to wait a while, but one company is going live online to explore the promise and pitfalls of distancing and dissimulation in Shakespeare's comedy, Love's Labor's Lost. To tell us about the performances starting on May 22nd are the producing artistic director from the Hub Theater Company of Boston, Lauren Elias, and the production's director and adapter, Bryn Boyce. Uh, thank you both very much for joining thank us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Okay. I, I want to start with uh, with Bryn this time because uh, you know there might have been a change of plan involved here uh, going back if the plan started you know two years ago maybe. Uh, why do this play at this time? Well, uh, Lauren and I have been talking about working together for a while, and uh, the play that we were originally slated to to do in person was a Lisa Loomer play, and yeah, the uh, waiting room, the waiting room. And, and there's no way to do that one distanced. We thought about it. <laughs> yeah. So so then we worked on uh, the Much Ado About Nothing that uh, just happened. We, we sort of called it Much Ado About Zooming um, together with uh, a, a bunch of great uh, actor friends. And then after that one and, it, and its success, it really, people were like, I really, I thought that was great. That was a, a fun adaptation, um, adding Zoom and, and COVID into the mix of, of that play. We decided we'd we'd try another one, and Love's Labor's Lost uh, seemed to be you know another fun comedy with uh, around the same cast size, and it has a lot of uh, there, there are a lot of fun things in the in the plot that sort of lend themselves to Zoom hijinks, I guess I should say. So yeah, it, it's been it's been fun to work on this one as well. And what's interesting, actually, is um, a lot of Shakespeare scholars argue that Love's Labor is Lost is the sequel to Much Ado. So we're sort of doing it in reverse order, but. <laughs> you, you know, when I was going over uh, the synopsis and some of the lines in this play, I, I kept seeing in my mind's mind here, uh, I hear uh, the Marx Brothers. <laughs> I mean, oh. I mean, some of the, the, the dialogue, <laughs> I can almost see Margaret Dumont coming in. I mean, this is this is a wacky play. It is, a, it is a very wacky play. It's a lot of fun. It's for Shakespeare scholars who are familiar with a lot of his works. It's got a fair amount of his favorite hijinks in it, as you might say. I, I think the first thing Bryn said to us when we started rehearsal was embrace the jingly jangly nature of it all, you know, laughing and all that kind of stuff. So, yes, there it, it's it's wacky and it's a lot of fun. But it also at the end, there's a tremendous amount of heart in it, which is I which is, I think, an interesting ending that you don't normally see in a Shakespeare play. You either normally see a very definitive comedy or a very definitive tragedy ending. What about that, uh, Bryn? You know, Jack does not have uh, Jill at the end. I mean, what's, but you know, is that supposed to be happy? Correct. Yeah. In most comedies, it, it, like the rule is there's got to be a wedding, right? And, and uh, Love's Labor's Lost ends with people being in love, but not being able to do that, um, you know, no spoilers, but not being able to do that immediately upon the ending of this of this play. And so they have to wait. And maybe that is the labor of, of the title. You know, they have they've they don't have to go through any more labor to find the love, but it's going to be a little while before they can actually get married. So it doesn't feel like a, a traditional comedy. And the characters, com they, they comment on that. And I think that, that is also kind of an interesting uh, bit about this play. What's interesting uh, is while it feels a little not true as normal shake as traditional Shakespeare, it feels so much realer, like in life, like that this is what actually happens to people that you don't just, you know, meet and fall in love and have a wedding and get to live happily ever after that sometimes there is, there is a lot of waiting and work and bad timing involved and there's something very real about that. Uh, what's what's also going on in the script Bryn, is, is that at, at the outset here you hear all this you know high-minded uh, admiration of you know philosophy uh, the long-term security almost a kind of intellectual satisfaction and, and then opposed to that you have the, the flux of life where, where you never know what's going to happen absolutely the the men the sort of men characters we don't have all men playing the men but uh the the sort of boys in uh the play have decided that they're going to spend three years reluctantly or not three years studying fasting having no um no contact with ladies only sleeping a couple hours a night and really wanting to get into the the rigors of study to make their country better um, which i think is an interesting concept 
but then you know they they forgot that they had that he's got a rule and he has to he has to welcome this this princess into his court to, to settle some disputes and life does indeed get in the way uh, when when they all all four of them meet and all four of them fall in love so yeah life gets in the way for sure. Laura, speaking of how life gets in the way, uh, you know we're going through this pandemic episode. Uh, in some ways. You, we want to bring Shakespeare up to date, at least to get him more in touch with us. Uh, any changes in this play that we should be prepared for? Definitely. Well, I don't want to give too much away, <laughs> but we are definitely, we have adapted it to the world that we are living in currently. We have definitely made a point to that, you know, some shows are set in 1982, some are 1776. This one is set May 22nd, 2021, in whatever time zone you happen to be in. <laughs> yes. Right. It is really a pro it is a, it is a real product of the moment and we are really embracing Zoom as not only a medium but a setting. Yes. What about adapting this to, to Zoom? And I'm thinking maybe one thing that might be a bit challenging. I think there's a part of this play where the characters are, are, are watching a pageant. Uh, how does that work <laughs> on, on the mosaic of Zoom? <laughs> That's great. We use this. We use this program called uh, OBS. Uh, I think it's online broadcast system where we're able to manipulate the the rectangles of Zoom uh, and and make it prettier than just a normal like you know sort of Brady Bunch Zoom call. And so we you end up sort of putting the people who are watching on one side of the screen and making the 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 pageant workers uh, the pageant um, actors they get to have their upper part of the screen and it kind of feels like a stage um it's it's very odd it's odd but it works um and, and you make their you can make their boxes bigger so that you can see um see the the cool stuff that they're doing in the pageant and we've updated the um we've updated the the pageant uh subjects if you will won't give anything away biden biden comes <laughs> <laughs> Well, what about watching this online? Because it, 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 you know, I think we all know what happens when people go to a theater. You, you sit there and you pay attention mostly. But but when, when you're at home and, and you're watching this, especially a play like this, uh, I imagine sort of unwinding, have a glass of wine handy, maybe. Absolutely. And we definitely want people to feel relaxed and comfortable because that is one of the best parts about doing Zoom theater is that, you know, no need to put on real pants. I mean, I'll tell you right now, I'm wearing slippers and pajama bottoms for most of the, for most rehearsals. But what we also want to make sure is that the show is visually interesting and that it, people don't end up sort of treating it like a book on tape, which is why we've worked so hard with OBS and with our actors to make sure that there's still plenty of visual sight gags and visual things that you don't want to click away and just go to another tab and check your email because you're going to miss a lot of fun stuff. I don't think I've ever worked on a play that has more uh, props that need to be passed around um, from character to character. And just Im imagine how many how many props have to go off your screen and then somebody grabs, right? So we are like passing passing a letter and then somebody else picks it up over here. I can't I can't tell you how many how many sight gags we have that we have to um, do some real physical work in this play to make things make sense. Uh, one, of the, one of the reasons this is a play worth watching is that there are a lot of gags in it and spitfire dialogue, but at the same time, this is a story about people who, who go from one place to another. They really change along the way. They do. There's a, there's a journey for all of the, actually, I was going to say all the main characters, but really everybody has a good, a good arc in this play. Um, from the the boys at the top who think that they need to you know shun the world to have any kind of learning uh, and realize in the end that em embracing the world is how you learn um just as an example uh, from the script of of people making making journey and change um it's pretty it's a it's an exceptional play and it doesn't get done very often um so i was really happy to get to work on it Finally, Lauren, we should make uh, sure we mention how people can tap into this, but but also about how this is being made accessible for a wider audience. Yes, as a, Hub is the only theater company in Boston that is pay what you can for every seat, every show, every time, no limit, no gimmicks, no nothing. 
so, and we really wanted to make sure that that philosophy carried over to our Zoom shows as well. So these are all, this is all pay what you can, whatever, and it will be broadcast on Facebook for free. So we really wanted to make sure that it was completely accessible, even though we couldn't actually gather together. <laughs> I think, and finally, the website uh, that people should go to one more time. Oh, please. yes. All, for more information and tickets, just go to our website, www.hubtheaterboston.org, and it'll take you right there. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to thank you both very much for taking the time to join us. Thank you. Thank you. So much fun.